So not more than a few hours before recording this video, I put out a tweet poll to my followers asking them this question. What's the most important thing to you when it comes to viewing a live stream? Is it the video quality, the way that things look, or is it the audio quality, the blending of volumes of gameplay, the microphone and how it sounds? And to my surprise, I found out that most people suggested that both are equally as important. Now, this begs the question, and it's a question that I ask myself a lot when I watch tons of other streams and streamers, is how come the video quality seems to be there, but the audio quality just isn't? And I don't think it's because any live streamer wants to have bad sounding audio. I actually think it's because the topic of audio and learning audio can be one of the most difficult things when you start getting in to live streaming. But when you start broadcasting, it's really important to understand that most people look at these things as being very important. The visual side of things is kind of your first impression. You can have gameplay happening and gameplay audio even happening without ever speaking to your viewers and people can experience a little bit of you um, through the visual side of things. And then secondary and sort of indirectly, the audio can definitely influence your viewers as well. So it does seem like it becomes the secondary thing that gets focused on, even though most people would suggest that it's equally as important to them. My name is Preacher. Welcome back to the Streamloots YouTube channel where we talk about everything streaming and Streamloots. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the importance of audio, specifically as it relates to the microphone and even more specifically, USB microphones, which are great if you're on a budget and you need to work hard with what you have. In today's video, I'm going to help you work on the audio side of things, specifically as it relates to your microphone. And to do that, I'm going to use one of the first microphone upgrades I ever made to my streaming setup, the Blue Yeti USB condenser mic. Now, I loved this microphone and I still do and I'll still use it as a backup in the event that something happens to my Shure SM7B. But I loved it for several reasons. And the first reason was that it was super easy to set up. You literally plug the USB cord into the back of it uh, underneath right into your computer in literally 10 seconds. It's that simple. I also really like this microphone because of the price tag. It was $130 when I bought it. I think it still retails at $130 if I remember correctly. And that might sound like a lot to you, but in comparison to some of the other microphones at the top of the line that you can get, such as a Shure SM7B, um, which is not only gonna be the cost of the microphone itself, you're talking about XLR cables and then an audio interface that's gonna take the audio from the microphone and convert that to something that your PC can receive. Things like preamps, mixers, a Go XLR, for example. All of those things can make the price tag of this a lot higher. So when you take that into consideration, a microphone like this for $130 that has decent quality sound um, and can uh, basically plug and play, it's a pretty decent price tag. And the other reason why I got this mic was because there were literally exponentially more positive reviews on this mic than any other mic in its class and I trusted that and so I bought this microphone and I've loved it um, it served its purpose I have since upgraded to a Shure SM7B but I will never forget this first love now this video isn't going to be as much of a comparison between the Blue Yeti and these other microphones that are in the same class instead it's going to be more about how to take a USB microphone that's a budget microphone such as the Blue Yeti and make it sound awesome. We'll plug this bad boy in, we'll see how it sounds right out of the box, and then we'll go into our streaming software, OBS, and we'll work with and learn about some of the filters in there that can help increase the quality of this microphone's sound. Now, a lot of the things you're gonna learn in this video, you can apply to your USB microphone, whatever you might get, and ultimately our goal at the end of this video is to help you sound like a boss when you're live streaming, even if you're on a budget. With that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so I forgot to do something that's probably a little important for the sake of this video, which is to talk a little bit about the features of this microphone so we can better understand uh, what we're doing before we plug this sucker in. So on the front of this microphone, there's gonna be a mute button that's a click uh, tap button there. And then we also have a uh, vocal monitoring volume here. We can actually plug in a headset here to this 3.5 millimeter jack, and we can hear real time by turning this volume up, uh, volume knob up 
uh, when we're you know using the microphone. And on the back side of the microphone, this is the front with the logo. This is the back. There is a gain knob, which will actually increase or decrease the send or the signal of the microphone to your, uh, you know, your streaming software or your PC. And then right here, this is probably the most important part. There are four different options for pickup patterns with this microphone. And on, uh, I'll show you the symbols that are here. So the one on the far left is actually going to be the stereo uh, pickup pattern. And that's going to pick up anything on this microphone that is on the left side or the right side of the microphone. This is great for ASMR um, or if you're really wanting to get a left and right sound um, for your viewers. And then on the other side, next to that is going to be the omnidirectional, which is the large circle there. And that is going to pick up any sound that's happening all around the mic. It's not going to be um, extra sensitive or less sensitive to anything around it. On the next option, you're going to see a heart shape. And that's the cardioid uh, pickup pattern. And that's what we would want to use for something like podcasting or live streaming, where the main focus is the voice that's happening in front of the microphone. The last option is a bi-directional which can be really great if you're trying to do maybe a podcast with somebody on the other side of the microphone. This is gonna pick up both what's happening in the front and in the back, and then it's gonna be less sensitive to things on the left and the right, left and right. I know my left from right. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's plug it in now and see how it sounds. Okay, so we have our Blue Yeti microphone plugged in right out of the box, and already you can start to get a sense of the difference between uh, a microphone like this versus the Shure SM7B that I just had plugged in. Now keep in mind, that's a $400 microphone, and it's being plugged into a Go XLR and has been EQ'd to sound even a lot better than that mic comes out uh, on its own. Um, some people have described the Blue Yeti as having a harsh sound um, or a tinny sound and really that's because it does tend to pick up a little bit more of the mids and the highs versus those low frequencies that give a lot of meat. Now there's still some meat there but it's something that could uh, be worked on I think and matching the price point it's pretty decent for what you're paying for. Um, the other thing with this microphone that I noticed right when I plugged it in is that it has a naturally high signal, which means that right into OBS at full volume, it's probably going to be clipping at the range that I'm speaking into this microphone. So I actually had to go into OBS and then I had to take down about 50% of the signal in order to get, uh, the sound quality to not be clipping or peaking, which is another really great talking point when you're talking about microphones, is if your signal uh, that you're sending is too high or too loud, you can experience something called clipping or peaking, which can distort the sound or create feedback, which is no bueno for your viewers. Um, we should also talk about the range of pickup that this microphone has and that any microphone might have. So as I get a little bit further away from the microphone, you're gonna notice a decrease in the volume naturally, um, but it's gonna be different for each microphone. So do some tests, understand the room that you're in. And as I get closer, you can hear that it's getting a little bit louder, um, but understanding the room that you're using the microphone in is really important. For example, if you have a fan running or maybe you have dogs in the house or in the background, um, you also wanna be aware of things that are super annoying like um, a smoke alarm that has a dead battery and it's chirping every 10 minutes for the love of all that is holy would you just change the battery for the sake of me and my teammates sanity please it's not that hard it's a 9 volt change the battery all right and so now you have a little bit of a sense of what this microphone sounds like so let's step into OBS and take a look at some of the other filters that we can add to this microphone very simply um, to increase the quality of its sound Okay, so now here we are in what I like to call Streamception World, which is basically my screen capturing a screen capturing a screen. Um, but for the sake of this video, talking about audio shouldn't be a big deal. So we're gonna be looking down at the audio mixer here and you can see, as I said before, I dialed down the fader here about 50% to bring us to a negative 18.6 decibels. And that's so that I can keep this volume in the green and yellow 
and definitely not getting into the red here, which would cause the mic to clip. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the cog wheel here for settings for this input, and we're gonna go to the filters. Now, when you look at the screen here, you're gonna see there's nothing added yet. So in order to add a filter to our microphone, we need to hit the plus sign here. And there's gonna be a variety of different options, compressor, expander, gain, invert polarity, uh, limiter, noise gate, noise suppression, and this VST 2.x plugin. Now, for what I've done with my USB Blue Yeti condenser mic is I haven't added all of these. I've only added a few, and that's the ones that we're going to talk about in this video. And they're the ones that I think are probably the most important um, when setting up your mic sound. So the first one we're going to talk about is noise suppression. So I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to have to give it a name. We'll call it noise suppression. And the second that I added that, you should have noticed a little bit of a shift in the quality of the sound. Um, and that's because noise suppression is intended to decrease any background noise outside of the pickup range of your microphone. So when I'm clicking here, you can hear it at about, at about the same level as uh, I'm talking. But when I move it back away from me, still in front of the mic, same volume of clicking, you can barely hear it. So by default, this noise suppression setting is set to negative 30 dBs, and you can adjust this left or right depending on how much suppression you want to have on your microphone. Okay, now let's look at the noise gate filter. Now when we add the noise gate, you might notice a little bit of a shift from the sound as it is currently. So let's add it. And let me explain the noise gate a little bit. The noise gate is another way to manage what sound is going into your microphone and at what level of volume specifically. So there's a closed threshold and an open threshold. And both of these are set in a way where the microphone will stop picking up any sound that is outside of these parameters, either a low volume or a high volume. And you're basically setting that range. So when there's anything of any volume that's outside of that range, the mic specifically shuts off and does not pick up that audio noise. So for example, if there's a volume of something outside of the mic that is below negative 32 decibels or higher than negative 26 decibels, it's not gonna pick up that sound. So the attack time that you see here is how quickly the filter reacts to unmuting your microphone when the volume has gone above the open threshold. The release time is the opposite of that, where the filter will react when the volume has gone below the closed threshold, it will mute the mic. So you're basically deciding how quickly you want the mic to mute and unmute outside of that range. And the next filter that we're gonna talk about is the gain filter. And the gain filter is just another way to manage uh, the send or the signal that's being sent to your microphone. We've used that word already during this video when talking about the Blue Yeti specifically that has its own gain on it, which can be doubled by the gain you add in OBS, for example. So I have the gain on this microphone that's the dial on the backside here um, all the way down, actually. Uh, because, as I said, the mic is already naturally a very hot mic in that it picks up a lot of sound at a pretty high level. So the gain is another way to manage the volume outside of what's already being sent. So as I turn this down, you're going to notice that the volume that's being sent is a lot lower, even though I'm speaking at the same volume. And then if we go above the default, we're going to notice that it gets a little bit hotter and we don't want to go any higher than this because now we're going to be really clipping the sound of the audio. So let's reset it to the default. Um, but this is a great option if you want to have a little bit more adjustment to your mic specifically as far as the volume being sent. And the last filter that I want to talk about is something called compression. So when we add a compressor to our microphone, what it's going to do is it's going to try to match volume um, depending on how loudly I'm speaking or how much audio sound is going into the microphone. And it's going to try to take my soft volume sounds and bring them up. And it's going to take my louder sounds and bring them down to match a compression level that we set. Okay, so now that we've added the compression to our microphone, 
we're going to take a look at some of these different options here and the ratio here um, that we see is going to impact the level of which there is dampening on volume outside of the threshold that we set and so we need to set both the ratio and the threshold and this can take a little bit of time depending on your voice because each person has a very different quality in their voice and how loud they speak and also as you're streaming you might react to things differently and you might get loud at certain spots or talk quietly at certain spots and you want to use compression to manage your voice individually the attack and the release is similar to the noise gate in that it's the amount of time that it takes for that filter to kick in uh, or on or off i should say um, outside of the ratio and threshold that you've set so go through each of these settings uh, and adjust them accordingly to your voice and uh, the way that you want your voice to sound okay so now that we've added some filters hopefully you notice a little bit difference in the quality of the mic sound and really we haven't done any EQing with this microphone as far as adjusting the low frequencies the mid frequencies and the high frequencies so this is this USB Blue Yeti mic bare bones with some of the filters added from OBS to help increase the quality of its sound. Now I will say that in the filter section in OBS, there is something called a VST plugin and you can actually download plugins to add an equalization to your microphone to increase some of those frequencies. But that's outside of the scope of this video because we wanna hear how to make this microphone sound uh, great as it is bare bones. And that's really it for this video, you guys. We wanted to take a second to really look at audio, talk about the importance of your microphone audio, but also use a microphone that's not going to break the budget. If you're looking for something um, that's inexpensive, you're more on a budget, but it's not the lowest tier quality that you can find on the market. Now, you can definitely go to that lower tier, but if you're gonna spend, this is what I think, if you're gonna spend let's say $50, $60 on a low tier USB microphone. I recommend if you're looking to put any energy into your stream and growing your channel, save that money, wait a little bit longer and invest in something like a Blue Yeti, a HyperX Quadcast or an AT2020 and increase your quality that much for just a little bit more money it's not the right move for every single person so obviously you need to make the best decision for you i realized about a few months into streaming that i wanted to provide uh, better quality from both my audio and my video but when it came to the microphone side of things i didn't want to cheapen out but i also didn't have the money to go the xlr dynamic microphone sure sm7b route and so this was a really great option. I know there's some other great options and I would love to know from you guys in the comments what microphones you're using, which ones you really love, and maybe how much you paid for that microphone. Um, if there's anything else in this video that you guys wanted to know more about, please let us know in the comment section below as well. And as always, you guys, for everything streaming and stream loots, make sure to subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on the future content that we have coming out. Appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.